Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. These words from former President Dwight D. Eisenhower. There must be justice sensed and shared by all peoples for without justice the world can know only a tense and unstable truce that's where we're at right now good morning everybody here comes kate smith and god bless america followed by a patriot i want to hear a patriot this morning with the pledge of allegiance good morning Oh, good morning, good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. Good to be back here in the saddle this morning on a Thursday. And, of course, we say thank you to our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call 734-6969. Let's go to the phone line right now and get somebody on for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Ah, oh, you're the man, huh? Yes, sir. I figured maybe I'd do it this morning since you're back. Well, I was kind of hoping that we'd have some other patriots, but you, my young friend, do a wonderful job. Very loud and eloquent. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all that boy damon i'm proud of you and i know i call him wheels most of the time but when i really mean to be direct i call him by his real name and you're doing a great job i appreciate you thank you sir all right keep it up Will do. All right. Weather brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. All your carpet and flooring, kitchen construction, home decor items, whatever you need to make your house a home. Now, I was talking the other day about wicker baskets, how they can help you for your home decor items. And uh, they say use decorative mirrors. You know, hey, there I am. Look at me. And to add instant light to your living space. You know, it does help transfer light to dark areas of your room, etc. So check it out, and they can help you at Cheney Flooring and Home Design. You be sure and get a hold of them today at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, or call them at 678-6945. Here's Gina with the weather. Here's a look at your weather for today. We do have some uh, rain showers in the forecast. Plus, yes, it is going to be windy because we do live in southern Idaho. Out of the west, right around 24 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 53. Tonight, low of 34. Tomorrow, looks like partly cloudy skies, but the winds are going to stick around. High of 57 with an overnight low of 33. And then for the weekend, absolutely beautiful. Looks like sunny skies. Highs are going to be in the mid to upper 60s, maybe even 70. Yesterday's high was 60 and the overnight low was 43. That is your weather for Step at the Ranch. I got to turn the microphone on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm sitting here talking to myself, and I said, thank you, Gina. And then I realized, hmm, you got to turn the mic on, Zeb. Brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door, Cheney Flooring and Home Design. Hey, Merv May, let's sell some cattle. Come on in here. All right. 
That's the chant of the world's best auctioneer, Merv May, from the Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Sale day today, starting at 1030. Everybody try to be there. Going to be another ripping good sale. Merv May, Cade Roggy, Lance Udy. And the number to call for consignment information and sale information, 6789411. The sale that works for you. Reese Ranch over at Cash Valley. Good folks over there. Bringing in 25 head of calves. The Williams Ranch at Malad. There's some mighty fine, good cowboy ranchers over in that country. 20 head of calves. TLK Dairy bringing in some butcher cows. And the Move You Dairy bringing in 40 Holstein steers. Weighing seven to 900 pounds. Good cattle. Acme Dairy bringing in some butcher cows. And, of course, the great big trailer line run. Sale time, 1030 at the sale that works for you. Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Today's sale day, 678-9411. Merv, sell those steers. All right. Good set of steer calves there. Here's a dollar 31. One and a half. 31. One and a half. 32. Two and a half. Three and a half. 134. Four and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half. 135. 50. 135 and a half. Selling dollar 35. Zeb Bell. Get the bottom again. Well, I'll tell you what. That's not too bad. Good morning, everybody. And I got to tell you up front. I'm more than angry today. Too many times we use the word mad, and I think that's a cheap way of stating our position. I'm very angry today. I'm angry about what's going on in our world. I'm angry about what's going on in our country. I'm angry about what's happening here locally with a kind of a naive, blasé attitude. And I'm going to express some of that anger about certain things in a few moments. And it's not theatrical. I am angry as to where we are in America. Now, first and foremost, I want to say thanks to Sharon. And uh, Sharon Hardy Mills, uh, it was a very short notice that I was going to be gone yesterday. I had some health issues that had to be addressed. Not going to go on and beleaguer the fact over the radio. I just had to get them addressed. And I appreciate at the kind of 11th hour, Sharon filling in for me and her and Wheels doing a great job. So to make it short, sweet, and succinct, thank you, Sharon. I appreciate it very much. Secondarily, I want to just mention there's a couple of things that I think bear mentioning in the sports world this morning. A lot of people don't like sports. That's boring. Not me. I love sports. But these are milestones. These are milestones that they'll be talking about for a long time in human competition. The Golden State Warriors basketball professional team won 73 games this year. That is a record. And the former record 72 by the Chicago Bulls. Figure they play 82 games in a season, traveling all over the United States and Canada, and they only lost nine games. That's a record. And secondarily, I watched the tribute to Kobe Bryant. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Stand by. I want to remind you about Denny's Restaurant at 611 Overland and Burley and the other great, tasty location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Now, next Thursday, mark your calendars right now. We're going to be at Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant at 611 Overland and Burley. Zeb's Lunch Bunch next Thursday. It's our spring fling lunch bunch. All the time, any time at America's Diner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It is phenomenal. Absolutely. Thomas and the rest of the crew, Terry, etc., serving you at Denny's Restaurant. Stop in and see them today. Also want to acknowledge Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Hello, Ramsey's. Really nice, folks. They've got all your heating and electrical needs. All. That's not an overstatement. It's the truth. Stop in and see them today. Tell them what you need. Please. They're open at 730 to 5 Monday through Friday. Ramsey Heating and Electric, 678-0459, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. I wanted to tell you, this is really something. I know they set him up. I know they set him up, but it was really something. Kobe Bryant last night said goodbye to professional basketball after 20 years with the same team. Number one, that is an achievement in itself because in this day of going where I can make the most money, the heck with the team spirit, I'm going to be my own man attitude, Kobe stayed with the Lakers for 20 years. 
The Lakers have been fairly rotten the last couple of years, and they had their worst season ever this year. He retired last night. The fan Faru and all the other things that happened were outstanding, with the exception of the National Anthem. It was one of the worst renditions of the National Anthem I've ever heard in my life. That man, he's a guy called Flea. It was repulsive on a bass guitar. Anyway, Kobe Bryant went out last night, and I said that he was set up, and he was. His team set him up to be the hero last night, and he was. He scored 60 points in the last time that he'll lace up his shoes. 60, 60 points, and led the Lakers to a victory last night over the Utah Jazz. You gotta, you gotta sit back and revel and say, "Hey, whether you like basketball or not, or like sports or not, you gotta sit back and say, holy cow! Here's a guy that his body is completely shot. I mean, it's not worth the powder to blow it to you know where. And he goes out and puts on an effort last night, and scores sixty points in his last game ever. I am impressed." Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. I really appreciate Minicash Sales sponsoring Doctor History on Tuesdays. Doctor History segment is one of the most listened to segments of anywhere, anytime, any radio station in the United States. Over one hundred and twelve countries are listening. Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport with Zach. We're going to try to get Zach here on the program with us next week in the studio if he's got time. He's busy. Well, you check it out today for all the lumber packages you need for remodeling your home or the shingles, for redo your roof or the western windows, keep the cold air out, warm air in, and vice versa. Don't forget, they are good. Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport. You stop in and see them today. Now, I mentioned a moment ago I'm angry, and I am, and I'm going to tell you why momentarily. Uh, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, and the number to call, 678-1191. They are, and this is not brag, it's never bragging when it's a fact. They are the best. There you go. They have the best of exercises, the best of sports medicine, the best of use of that hydrotherapy pool with the treadmill. They are the best at helping you get back to being you. No brag, just fact. And they've got the best people headed up by Nick Greenwell and the rest of his crew. Call them today at 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation in Burley. The best. Okay, let, I'm going to lay it on the line here this morning because there's no way in the world I'm going to mince words on this. The Times News and certain letters of uh, to the editor of the Times News over the last couple of months with the Muslim refugees coming into our area, Oh, they've tried to soft soap this thing. They've tried to lay down rose petals for them. They've tried to make those of us that are speaking out against enhanced uh, refugee situations in our area as bigots and hate mongers. I can bear that. But the one thing I cannot bear is that when ignorant people, underline the word ignorant people, compare Muslims Allah and my God, as the same. Then I get really, really upset. And that's why ignorant people need to be informed. And so I have worked for the last three weeks in finding the person that absolutely will address this problem and address it with authority, and that's Dr. Alvin Schmidt from back in St. Louis, Missouri. And he's going to be on my program next Monday at 1030, and we are going to lay the truth on the line. And for the ignorant people that are spreading the idea that uh, Muslims Allah, and you are my God, a Christian God, 
are the same, I hope they take notes. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Gee, I would love to talk to you. I mean that. That's why we set this program up. And uh, it's not uh, all my opinion. It's yours and mine together, and we'll see what we come up with. Give me a call. Come on. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Are you needing equipment for a certain job? Well, if you are, there's why spend your time saying, well, I better call, let's see, so-and-so, or I better call so-and-so, or mm, what about this guy? No, come on. I'm telling you the best place to go is bury equipment and rental. That's right. Leasing or buying, they have the equipment to get the do- job done right. In Jerome on South Lincoln, Twin Falls, West Addison, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. The Deuce on the Bobcat, the Coyote, the Walker mowers. Oh, yeah, it's that time of the year. All the steel equipment. Everything. And now also you realize they've got the Coyote tractors. You can't beat the deal they're offering. Zero percent interest for 60 months. Six zero. Call them today or stop in. Jerome, Twin Falls, or 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Berry Equipment and Rental. There you go. Uh, Come on, folks. Uh, We put a lot of effort into this program to get things ready for you. You just please give me the effort of a phone call, 436-2244. The Republican Party, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on with Rita, I uh, I want to say this to them here and nationally, and I've got some dear friends in the Republican Party. But I hope they all take a deep breath today and inhale, hold it for a few seconds, think, and then exhale. Today, they'd better sol- start solving their problems. Today, they better get their act together. This includes RNC leader Rance Priebus. This includes Donald Trump. Shut up, Donald Trump, about the Republican Party. Go to work. Try to put a Band-Aid on everything and go to work against Hillary. That's the enemy. Shut up and put things together. If this convention in the summer goes to a contested, fragmented convention, it's going to open the door for the evil left, and Hillary will waltz into the White House and smile as she creates nothing more than a dictatorship. Republicans, clean up your act. Good morning, caller. Good morning, young man. Hey, uh, did you hear the other day... I called it about Chipotle, where I can't remember what group it was, but it caught my attention. They said their board of directors weren't diverse enough, so they needed to let two people go and hire other diverse minorities, I guess. I don't know. I had not heard that about Chipotle, but let's let's just lay it on the line here, Doug, and I think you'll understand why I'm saying this. Uh, I am so sick of the word diversity. I'm so sick and tired of people that are phonies, that have no idea what the real world's like, uh, telling you and I how we should accept things, how we should accept filth and immorality. And for Chipotle, a restaurant chain that absolutely has had their finger on death's door, ready to turn the knob because of something going on with a virus, and an E. coli problem. Who in the world are they to stand up and preach about diversity right now? Start putting out some safe food for the public and shut up. Yeah, well, it was some other group that was complaining about Chipotle's uh, board of directors that weren't diverse enough. If it wasn't Chipotle, it well, was, you, you, I didn't you, hear who it was. And whose right is it? You know something, Doug, if you've you got a business over there, and you do a wonderful job, and we had many, many advertisements on this program about your changing locations and going to a new location. If you want to hire Tom, Dick, and Harry as your board of directors, what business is it of mine? Exactly. That was my point. It's a private business. It's privately owned. So who has the right to tell you 
who you can have on your board of directors and who you can't. I am so sick and tired of these clowns looking for a circus that live on the liberal left, and they come out from under rocks to complain about every day, the Al Sharptons and all these other people. You start a business. You have people that you trust. You want to have them as your board of directors. I don't care if it's a president or CEO. I don't care. It's your business. That's right. These, these people, that I think, personally, I think they need to get out and get a life. They, they need to get out of mom and dad's basement and get in the real world. That's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. Never happened. They can't get out and get a life because they're not smart enough. Well, they're not smart enough and their parents won't make them. That's, there's two, two faults there. The parents for letting them stay there for forever. Oh, my. Enabling them. And them not having enough get up and go to get out and do it on their own. You know, Doug, this morning I told you I'm angry. And I really am angry because look where we are. We've got one party that absolutely is supposed to represent conservatism, is supposed to represent moralistic values in this country, is supposed to represent the people, it's supposed to look at common sense, and they're falling apart with their infighting. And I'm not kidding you, Doug. I'm so mad at the Republican Party right now this morning. If they send me another letter of saying, oh, you're late on paying us your extra money for support, I'm going to call up. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Buy a plane ticket and go back to and smack somebody in the nose. They've got to get their act together because problems like this that you're talking about with diversity and forced diversity and everything, that's because we're letting the liberal left run us. Well, it's true. They're part of the problem. The, the Republican Party, the, we elected them back there in the House and the Senate because they said they were going to stop Obamacare, they were going to stop Obama, and look what they've done. So it has made the citizens out here turn their back on the Republican Party because they're they're just as much as the problem as the left is. If we don't stop, and I'm not pulling punches, the evil Underline that word, evil. Look it up in the dictionary and really read the meanings of the word evil. The evil, sinister left that's being promoted by Hillary and the Democrats and others, the George Soros's of the world, we are doomed as a country. That's not theatrical, Doug. That's a fact. That is a fact. We need to wake up. We need to call our congressmen, our senators, and let them know that they, <laughs> their job depends on their actions, and if they don't do as we ask, we'll put someone else in that will. All right. Hey, listen, do me a favor. If you go to the store, get me some Alka-Seltzer. I'm going to need it. <laughs> I'll get you something else, too, to help call. I was hoping you'd say that, Dougie. Try out your new cup holders. <laughs> I love those. I already have. I love them. <laughs> They've been out on the lawn with me. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. You betcha. All right. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. i got two commercials to get in here. I'll be right with you. I talk too much. Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. All you have to do is call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. Also, real fast, before I go to the caller, I want to remind everybody about Dr. Christine Pickup. What an amazing lady. What knowledge. She knows more about hearing and audiology and the reparations of problems with your hearing than anybody I've ever talked to in my life. She is extremely sharp. And she can help you with your hearing problems with a hearing screening and then go from there. Call her today for an appointment at 312-0957. The best, Dr. Christine Pickup at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Call her, thank you for your patience. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Zeb, and glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back. What can you do to help alleviate a lot of my pain, anger, and strife? Go. I'm going to oh. give you 20 seconds. Well, uh, they call them chill pills. I don't know where you get them at or mm, anything. I don't want one. You might try that. Nah, never mind. I'd rather stay mad. Here's what, here's what the problem is with the Republican Party. It's right here in Idaho. Why can't we get a decent candidate for the 2nd District representative? 
We got one woman that's running. I can't even remember what her name is because she does not do anything. What is wrong with that party? There's one of the people out there somewhere, isn't there? Okay, you're talking about Simpson, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll talk about Mike Simpson. I'll talk about him. And I hope somebody tapes this. I hope somebody takes it into his regional offices. I hope somebody calls him in, in Washington, D.C. Mike, where are you? You're supposed to be a congressman for all the city. Or, pardon me, all the community. You're supposed to be a congressman for all the people that constituent in this area. And you have not called your constituents in this area. You have not bothered to call me for this program, to be on this program for over two years. Where are you, Mike? Well, there you go again, because he has not made any effort whatsoever. He don't have to do anything more to get elected, because... We don't go out and find somebody that's worthwhile. But you know right no. there what you just said. Wait a minute, Keith. But Keith, wait a minute. Keith, wait a minute. You made a point, and I've got to jump in on you, because you made an excellent point that needs to be elaborated. He's not getting any quality people to push him on a possible non-election, and so therefore he's not paying attention to his constituents and addressing the issues. And that's his fault right now. You hit on that, and I wanted you to elaborate on that. Well, I think this all comes down to the money. If Simpson gets in problems, you know, if he had somebody worthy running against him, there is so many people out there that need favors that he probably would be hard to beat because he could put lots of ads on the radio and everything else. And I think that's what people are concerned about. They don't want to waste their money on a campaign that's they don't think they can win. There you go. Keith, I appreciate your call this morning. Thank you very much. You have a good day. I promise, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about something that it, it's going to affect you and you and you and you and me, everybody, if we allow the evil left to become the leadership of this nation, Hillary Clinton. And that is her $1 trillion tax plan increase. $1 trillion. Kind of fathom that a little bit. A trillion. Caller, I'm going to ask your indulgence. Stay with me just a moment. I've got to get an ad on here. I'll be right with you. Don't forget, Maisie is the best. Penetron Soil Conditioner by Maisie. Increasing yield and quality of your crops. They have a 22-year proven record of increasing yield and quality of all Idaho crops. And believe me, it speeds germination, reduces crusting, improves stand, stimulates root growth, and microbial activity. I'll tell you what, and it also saves a lot of water and that is money back in your pocket increase your crops performance with a proven soil conditioner penetron by Maisie. get the original not the cheap imitations contact your crop advisor to obtain penetron soil conditioner or call my dear friend adrian arp at 734-2255 good morning caller you're on the air Good morning. I think I just heard my name being spilled in there. <laughs> it's a great product, and, and thank you for the ad. You know, I got to tell you, that was not that was not planned. That was not but, planned at all. <laughs> Brian Smith was a great candidate, um, but it was all about smear campaign come from the and the lot of money come the a U.S. Chamber of Commerce that wants cheap labor. That's their main goal for these big corporations. And Simpson accepted, I, I mean, in fact, the most of his contributions came from out of state. And U.S. Um, Chamber of Commerce was the lead in that. And uh, so Simpson was, of course, because he's a lawyer, almost all the congressmen up there now are lawyers, Democrat or Republican. So they made a big issue about that. Simpson's been trying, is doing a great job of tying up our lands and taking more land away from our private people and locking them up so that only a backpacker can get have access to it. And you and I don't do, do a whole lot of backpacking anymore, Zeb. And, you know, but he's, nobody will run against him of any sorts now. I mean, he has no op token opposition again. 
because it takes a lot of money. And well, 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 get that kind of outside influence. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait, Adrian, wait a minute. You're making some good points. Let me have a little time on the playing field here. Hold on. What you just said is very, very important, and I want to highlight. Number one, we're looking at a society right now here in America that has forgotten about people in general using public lands. And your point is so well taken about only backpackers that are six feet tall, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, and can walk 25 to 34, 40 or 50 miles and then come back to their vehicle. There's the ones that public land is being open to. I'm on crutches. I can either go to public lands, either a horseback on a four-wheeler. And when I am shut off of seeing, viewing, and enjoying my public lands with my lovely wife, I am going to do any means necessary to make sure that I still can do that, whether it means, quite frankly, a wire cutters or disavowing the law. Is that plain enough? Well, your point is well taken, because just look at the, the amount of federal land there are in the first place. And then you you put the, all these additional restrictions on it. You know, I have a friend that worked in the Forest Service, and just before he, uh, he retired, he, he was putting tank traps up north here, um, and he didn't like what he was doing. But whenever there's a fire on the on federal land, they can't get in there yeah. to fight it because of these tank traps. They can't get any ground equipment except for somebody with a shell, you know, with a a pick and an axe or a shovel and a backpack to get in to fight the fire, and then they have to spit on it from the air with aerial drops of some sort. Well, and the the lunacy... It's, it's totally ludicrous with, you know, the management of our lands, and Simpson just keeps voting this, and, of course, he rubber-stamped all of the Obama's uh, tax increases yeah. and so forth. He hasn't fought against Obamacare. You know, but he's been bought off. He's he's your consummate bought off politician. Well, I got to jump in here, and I got to do a commercial break. But everything you mentioned is spot on. I am so sick and tired of the mismanagement by our government to our public lands and the absolute shutting out, locking up, and saying no to America. I'm going to fight those people till my last breath here on this radio program. Uh, Adrian, always appreciate your call. Thank you. One last thing. All of this ties into the United Nations Agenda 21 program. It does. Basically it force the ranchers and the farmers whether it's uh, spotted owl or whether it's uh, sage grouse, um, they're bringing in these endangered species that never were here, like the Canadian gray wolves. It's all about taking over the land, forcing the people into the big cities so they're more manageable under a one world United Nations world government. I agree. I agree. And thank you, Adrian. I got to run. Thanks. You bet. All right, sir. Have a great day. Bye now. Don't forget Charlie Howell, my buddy, Jerome County Commissioner, District 2. Charlie has served four terms as county commissioner, and he spearheaded the new criminal justice facility in Jerome County. He's very proud to be a leader, very impressive to be a leader, too, and he meets the needs of what Jerome needs for the years to come. Believes and demonstrates in team play, and we urge you to go to the polls on May 17th and vote. Vote for Charlie Howell. Jerome County Commissioner, District 2. Paid for by Howell for Commissioner Committee, Brenda Hayden, Treasurer. Thank you. Also, speaking of which, I want to mention this. May 17th, now write it on your calendar, please. There's no excuse. May 17th is primary election day. I want to see the best turnout we've ever had. And on behalf of Senator Kelly Anthon, Representative Fred Wood, and the Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke, please go and vote on May 17th. And it's a right. And by golly, it's also a privilege and responsibility of America. So be sure and take your picture. Your ID for identification. Be proud of who you are when you vote on May 17th. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Dickie, and I want to help raise your blood pressure. Oh, boy, here we go. Okay. Did you know, and this is a fact, I'm not making this up or hearsay or anything else, but 97% of Texas is privately owned. Mm, I, I, I agree with that. The government, or 
public lands or whatever you want to call it, has owned 75 percent of Idaho. What's wrong there? Uh, I'm not going to say 75 percent. I think you're off on those percentages. Well, that's a statistic. Well wait, well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Keith. I thought the last time I saw the stats, and I'm not arguing with you, you might have a reevaluation figure in your hand, but the last I heard it was like 68%. Uh, you know, who's going to quibble over that little percentage difference? I agree with you. It's an absolute mess. Well, I'm going to give in because I don't really know that that's, that's what it was at that time. And I was in Texas at a at the zoo of all places and I went in and they were talking about Texas and they had a machine there that you could punch in and it would tell you each state how much public land belonged to the government and that's what I went by when I said I knew I knew what the machine told me yeah yeah <laughs> You know, I, I'm just absolutely sick and tired of the federal government, per se, pointing its finger at us, we the people, and telling us what to do. Maybe this isn't a big deal to you and others, Keith, but it is to me. We the people, it's a government of we the people, not the bureaucrats to the people. Well, when I was in Las Vegas this last winter, I followed this case of this was in Nevada. You remember what I can't even think of the guy's name right now, but it was a it was a real big deal and then they went to Oregon and now they put him in jail. And oh yeah, the Bundy family all versus of land. Yeah, the Bundy yeah. family, yeah. Uh, you know, what they do to people is simply this. They take somebody who is just an innocent person trying to make a living and everything and make an example out of them so nobody else will challenge them. I can't argue that. Thank you, Keith, again for calling back. It shows you're being attentive. Thank you, sir. You bet. Bye -bye. God bless you. Caller, I'll be right there. Uh, I want to just, well, I'll go ahead with your call. I got two minutes before the weather. Go ahead, please. Yes, I've uh, listening to you and uh, Keith talking about the land owned by the federal government in the state of Idaho. On the day, one of the days that you were. Uh, gone and uh, you had Sharon filling in for you. I called in. I forgot the percentage by now, but there's a website you can go in on the uh, internet and look it up and you can see pretty much all the western start at, around South Dakota area. Yeah. Everything west of that is mostly federally owned yeah. and it shows in pink where the federal uh, government owns and the white is where it's privately owned. So there is a very small strip in Idaho, Utah, and Nevada that is privately owned, and everything else is pretty much owned by the government and controlled by the government. I'll, I'll come and right out and say... You know well, Riley, wait a minute. Hang on. I'll just tell you this, and, and I don't care if somebody's offended by this. They've got a right to their opinion, and so do I. I have been an advocate, uh, along with many politicians, for states taking over and back a lot of federal land because, number one, they can manage it a heck of a lot better than the federal government. So I'm an advocate of the state taking back a lot of our in-state lands. I, I believe personally that the federal government shouldn't control any land further than 10 mile out around the Washington, D.C. area. The states ought to control everything else. Yeah, well, I agree with you 100%. They, they know their state. The people who live there know the state. Uh, they can take care of it far better with that doubt in my mind and less expensive if, if the states would just take care of it themselves. All right, Riley. Appreciate your... When people log, they replant. It's, it's like, uh, you know, your rope and steers. You know, you've said many times that you'd never, ever abuse them because that's, you know, they're expensive. Well, people don't abuse the land because that's how they make a living. Amen. But anyway, I'll let you go. My All friend. right, Riley. Good job. Thank you. Caller, uh, go ahead real quick. I've got to do a weather forecast, but I'll take your call first. Go ahead. Well, quickly, uh, it's about 64% of Idaho is publicly controlled by the, you know, whatever, for, you know, Forest Service, you know, um, you know, land... BLM. So, I really don't uh, care about the percentages, Randy. All I care about is that we need to take it back over from the feds because of mismanagement and stupidity. Well, here is just a quick uh, little tidbit. Uh, when the federal government manages public land, they lose so much money an acre. 
When the state manages public land, they make money per acre. And this is the thing. Up in Okanagan, up in Washington, in one county alone, they burnt a million acres. And these farmers, these ranchers up there that are used to having grazing ground are they're literally surviving. They don't know how they're going to survive. And here you've got a governor trying to squeeze the life out of their his very own constituents because he gets reelected by the, the by the Seattle area. It's just like in Nevada, Las Vegas reelects Harry Reid, and uh, in in Oregon, it's Portland that reelects these people. And the rest of us are just hung out to dry. Thank God Boise's not as big as, as some of them. <laughs> I like that analogy. Yes, I will thank the good Lord. Randy, good job. Thank you. You bet. See you. All right, buddy. Hey, i got to get to the weather right now. I am running a little bit late. Stand by, and I'll take some more calls. In just a minute, i got to tell you, some of the highlights or in this case, low lights, low lights, of the evil left Hillary tax plan to bring in at least $1 trillion more out of your pocketbook and mine. Right now it's time for the weather brought to you. And by the way, wheels, jump on here. I'm hearing a little bit of fuzz. Is it making too much noise on the radio this morning? Do we need to change lines? We could. It's, I can hear the fuzz, too, but it's not as loud as your voice. Well, you, well, I don't care about that. If it's offensive to anybody out there, we'll change lines. you got to let me know about that stuff, all right? During the 9 o'clock hour, we'll change lines. Yes, sir. All right. Don't forget Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service at 336 South, 450 West of Paul. And, boy, if you haven't had your trees properly pruned, pop your peas, you better get it done now. Because good tr- pruning, proper pruning, really enhances the beautiful growth of your trees and your bushes. Gano's can take care of that. Scott Gano is an expert. I mean, you talk about trees. This man took a course in all the treeology. He knows all about it. And plus the fact they install sprinkler systems and are the best. 336 South 450 West of Paul, 431-8733. Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. Caller, I'll be there in a minute. Here's Gino with the weather. Here's a look at your weather for today. We do have some uh, rain showers in the forecast. Plus, yes, it is going to be windy because we do live in southern Idaho. Out of the west, right around 24 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 53. Tonight, low of 34. Tomorrow, looks like probably cloudy skies, but the winds are going to stick around. High of 57 with an overnight low of 33. And then for the weekend, absolutely beautiful. Looks like sunny skies. Highs are going to be in the mid to upper 60s, maybe even 70. Yesterday's high was 60 and the overnight low was 43. That is your weather. Oh, she does a fantastic job. Thank you, Gina. Brought to everybody by Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. 336 South, 450 West of Paul, 431-8733. Caller, you're very patient. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, Zeb, good morning. Uh, I've been to several meetings around town here where on different items where people show up. You might get 10 people or maybe 20 people, and that's not going to do any good. We've got people around here that know how to organize things. Why well, can't get somebody to organize a place like uh, go down to the file fairgrounds where you can get a couple of hundred people in there. And that's the only way the politicians are going to understand where we're at. We're going to have to do it in numbers. Yeah, There's no question about it, Tony. We're going to have to do it in numbers. There's no question about it. The public right now is going, oh, gee, I'm too busy. Uh, I don't have time. I've got to go bowling, or I've got a chance to meet some friends up at the bar tonight. I just don't have time for that. Oh, golly, I'm so, uh, I'm so oppressed with my time. That's the problem. America has lost its caring. America has lost its ability to see what's right and what's wrong, and America doesn't go to the polls to try to straighten things out. This is the last election that I do. This is what my feelings are. If we don't get somebody up there like Donald Trump, I know he's a ball of fire. People don't like him. This country is done. You know, you've been through the Great Depression, and you understand things from actually living through it. And when you listen to Hillary's new tax plan of over $1 trillion in increases, I mean, my goodness, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that people are going to go broke. Businesses are going to shut their doors. It's going to be a travesty. 
I remember growing up in those times, and I remember when my father couldn't pay $9 a month for rent in that lousy, stinking place we were living in. The next morning, we were out in the streets, and we had to go live with this family and that family to survive. And that can easily happen again. I hope not, but I fear it. I fear it. Tony, God bless you and Mary. You're wonderful people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. God bless Bye. you. He's right. It can happen again, but we're not we're not aware. We don't care. Well, I can't do anything right now. I can't go to that important meeting because I've got a golf game at 4 o'clock. Oh, gee. You know... Listen to this. I'm just going to read you some of the lowlights of evil left Hillary. She wants to include a 28% cap on itemized deductions to raise $350 billion for co college subsidies. Oh, you say, what do you mean, college subsidies? Free college. I am so adamantly offended by that. You should be offended by that. I worked, and I'm not going to hedge words, I worked my butt off to pay for my own college. You maybe did the same. You struggled. You scrimped. You studied. And then did all of the above again. Studied, scrimped, and struggled. But you paid for it. And now these crybaby wannabes that never will millennials, they want free college. So she's going to set it up at $350 billion. She plans to bring in $275 billion for infrastructure purposes and plans to raise somewhere between $400 and $500 billion in revenue by eliminating certain deductions. Uh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Whoa. Key words, three words, eliminating certain deductions. Doesn't specify, but she's going to hold the pen with the IRS and they're going to eliminate certain deductions. They're also going to raise the estate tax. And they're going to raise capital gains taxes. And then they want to implement the buffet rule. Listen to this one. The buffet rule, meaning anyone making over a million dollars a year will face at least a 30% tax rate hike. Hmm, that would take in business owners. That would take in businesses. That would take in private business owners. Maybe it might cause them to curtail employment and cut back on jobs and or the business itself. This is stupidity! You're going to wreck, I mean, you're going to drive it in the ditch. Any incentives to work, save, or invest with the evil left Hillary's tax plan. You think Bernie's plan is nuts? Look at Hillary's. And they don't care. They don't care. They are the evil left. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with the best in tires. I mean that, the best in tires. And uh, whether it is for your truck, your car, your horse trailer, boat trailer, everybody's going to have a little. You deserve a little fun. Well, by golly, I'll tell you what. You just get over there and check out all the great buys. A lot of them are on sale right now. You can't afford to pass them up. Like the Proxus ST2, on sale, all-season traction. Superior handling for your pick 'em up trucks. Mm hmm. They've got all the custom made wheels to dress up that four wheel wonder, too. And the best in brake service, and of course, shocks and struts, and front end alignments. Oh, they're good. Oh, 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 yes. And free battery checks, and they've got batteries for every need. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. I got time for one more call. Give me a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. A couple of quick notes while I'm waiting for your call. Trump's campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, cleared, cleared, 
on any assault charges with the fruitcake that uh, Michelle... I'll tell you what, I absolutely looked at this case, and I think it's ridiculous. Michelle Field, there was no brutality. There was no assault. This was nothing more than a female reporter with an agenda of, hey, look at me. And I'm so glad that cooler heads prevailed. I looked at that tape no less than 100 times. I looked at the stills. And you can't find one single thing that he did that was an assault charge against this ditzy reporter that shouldn't be allowed to have a pen and a pad. So I'm glad that is out of there. And it's no reflection on any particular campaign, but it really was a low light for Trump's campaign, and I think it was a set-up deal. I really do. We're going to take a break right now, and uh, I'm going to go cool down. I'm going to stand on the back porch for a few minutes and breathe in, breathe out. Karate Kid. And uh, we'll be back with the Chamber Report, etc., coming up in a few minutes. And Wheels, I will call you back in just a few seconds. So give me about a minute or two, and I'll give you a jingle. Zeb at the Ranch, I'll be back in about six minutes. Welcome back, Zeb at the Ranch. You know, folks, uh, I hope that you understand that we're going to be sincere and honest about any and all stories on this program. And, and again, I want to mention, sometimes I'll get emails and calls and people, oh, you're just too demanding. Well, you're just too forceful. Well, you're too opinionated. That's what it's all about. If you can't stand the heat, please do not go near that fire. Thank you. Brought to you by your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and the La Crosse Valley in Idaho, we're always your Western Waste Services. Western Waste Services, the Oh, uh, thank you very much. Don't forget, I've been urging you that if you've got cleanup to take care of this spring, get a hold of a dumpster at Western Way Services. They've got them in all different sizes, and in my case, with this office and the garage and the basement, extra big. <laughs> I'm telling you, I get a mess. Anyway, you get a hold of them today. They are locally owned and operated. We're going to be talking to Joe Renfro later on this morning with Western Way Services. Always at your disposal, 734-6969. In a moment, we're going to go to the Chamber of Commerce and visit with Kay. Stand by. I want to remind you also about Handsome Mortuary with our dear friend, Joel Heward. His staff, his family, always taking care of you. When there's the passing of a loved one, as we've stated, I mean, not only the sadness, not only all the things that have to be done in just a very limited amount of time, but you're just, you're just thrown into kind of a, oh, my goodness, what do I do next? Please write their number down and call. They are there to help, always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. 436-5636, the number to call, Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, and they will help you. And by the way, they've got such flexible hours, and they can go to the rural towns and the churches to meet with you. Call them, 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary. Don't forget, on Mondays, we've got Vicky's Country Garden with the Gardening for Idiots, named after me. I'm learning! And she's got all you need for your gardens this year, and also to decorate your outer exterior of your home. Lots of decorative rock and all the bark. Everything is in at Vicky's Country Gardens, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. And she'll be on the air with me next Monday at 916. Oh, my goodness, I'm running late, <laughs> and I'm choking to death, too. Here's Kate Cameron at the Minicasha Chamber. Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Well, I am fantabulous. How's my favorite lady at the chamber? Oh, I'm fabulous. It's a it's a little blustery outside today, but oh, I just love spring. Well, I do too, and you've got an outstanding event coming up. We do. 
Um, come and get your tickets. We have a women's seminar and expo coming up in, uh, two weeks from today on the 28th. Hats off to Simplicity, and we have all kinds of things going on that day. And um, maybe I should get Jackie on next week to actually give a little bit more detail about what's going on because she's kind of um, very involved. She knows all the speakers, but we're going to do a make-and-take craft. We're going to have... Oh, all kinds of people come in, talk about how to simplify your life and your fitness arena and your cooking and how to do um, makeover projects with your furniture and all kinds of stuff. Oh, man. And what about, is it too late to get a booth there? People have asked me. They've called me here at home. I think so. So, um, I will double check, but I think that we sold our last one, um, could have been yesterday or the day before. Okay. And, and if somebody's interested, call us, 679-4793, and um, let us work through that. All right. Now, what about the doors? When do they open? And, boy, what's what are the great things that are going to be in there as far as guest speakers and everything, right? Well, the doors open at 930, and... Um, Come in advance and get your tickets because they're twenty dollars if you buy them from us in advance. They're twenty three dollars at the door, and so you want to get those picked up in advance. We've got those tickets available here now, and um, yeah, like I said, there's a whole lineup, a whole lineup of great speakers. Anytime people have questions about what's going on in the community or what's happening in the Minicash area, Chamber of Commerce with the lovely Kay Cameron and her staff are there to serve you. Absolutely. There's also some other things that going on I want to touch on just really quick this weekend. Uh, Saturday night at Minico High School, they're having a Rupert Community Town Hall on suicide prevention and signs to be aware of and things that you should look for. Um, if you um, know somebody that might be possibly thinking of that, that direction, this is great. It's open to the public. Go and attend. It's at Minico High School at 10 a.m. It's got great information for everybody. So um, that is this Saturday, again, 10 a.m., a town hall on suicide prevention. Also, the Burley Fire Department tomorrow night is having a crab feed. It's a fundraiser for um, that's hosted by the ladies uh, uh, fire department ladies auxiliary club. That's twenty five dollars per person. I'm sure if you call the Burley Fire Station, they can give you more information on that. And um, this weekend is a high school rodeo over at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds, both Friday and Saturday night. Um, so things to do this weekend. All right, and I'm running a little bit late. Tell everybody how they can get a hold of the Chamber of Commerce for Minicasha. Come by and see us. We're located at 1177 7th Street in Hayburn. Give us a call at 208-679-4793. Find us online at minicashachamber.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Oh, you do an excellent job. Okay, God bless you. Talk to you next week. Hey, have a great day. Thank you. We'll be with Kyle James in just a moment with Urgent Care Standby. Don't forget Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. This is the place to go and find the fun. That's where the fun is sold. All the ATVs, all the accessories, great service. Service department, what are you waiting for? Get out and enjoy. Get out and enjoy Southern Idaho. And listen, they can help you. Believe me, Nick and the whole crew over there have all the different ATVs, all the different sizes, all the different colors, all the accessories that you need to enjoy. So stop over and see them today. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. Yep, it is where the fun is sold. Right now, let's go to the phone line. He's waiting patiently. I hope. Kyle James with Urgent Care in Twin Falls, Urgent Care in Jerome, and Riverview Urgent Care in Burley. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? Well, I'm just running a stock car race right here in my studio. I'm running a little bit late this morning. Hey, not a problem. Not a problem. I don't know how you stay on time every day so well, so... One day is okay with me if you have a little flap. You know what happens on weekends? I take any available alarm clocks or anything, take them out in my backyard and shoot them. 
right. <laughs> hey, what's going on with the weather b- being so nice, Kyle? And everybody's outside. Everybody thinks they're Superman. Everybody thinks that without any conditioning, they can climb up on the roof and fix the shingles or climb up in a tree and prune it. My goodness, look out below. A lot of accidents this spring. Yes, yes, there is. In fact, there's a lot more than just the uh, tree branches that are falling out of the trees this year. Uh, and, and you're right, everybody's Superman until they fall and hit the ground. Then we all realize that maybe that wasn't such a great idea. And so, of course, we really stress safety this time of the year, you know, as everybody's getting back out in the yard and getting back out in the field. And, you know, and contractors, they're starting to... You know, now the ground's actually thawing up. They can start pouring more concrete, things like that now. And so they are starting to get into that situational uh, things where safety really is a big part. And so we we push, you know, and tell people, be extra safe right now. And, and uh, everybody's got spring fever, and we all want to rush out and get our yard into shape and, and get things looking good and kind of take care of things before mother nature starts taking care of things and um and unfortunately along with that there are some accidents that do happen and um and for those that think that they're the only ones or they're the idiots uh it's not the case Uh, in fact we see several every day so don't think you're you know the, the idiot that happened to slip and cut your hand or something like that that happens all the time that's why they are called accidents and that's why the urgent care is there do you have a bumper sticker that you could pass out that says on behalf of urgent care you're not an idiot you're just one of many (laughs) that's a great one (laughs) well it's very true you know just accidents happen and um unfortunately you know people try to be very cautious um that You know, we had a patient the other day that uh, she was working in her garage, and she builds furniture. And she has for years. And it just happened that she hit a knot in the board, and the the saw bounced a little bit, and it just went right out of her hand. And and unfortunately, the other end of the saw got into her hand. And uh, and so she came in and, and was saying how dumb she felt. And I said, no, no. I said, that's what accidents are. Um, and the good news is we can get you fixed up. Oh, good. Now, along with everything with accidents, what about the DOT physicals, the Department of Transportation physicals? What about those? Yeah, absolutely. They, they're they a huge thing. Of course, you know, we do work comp, so employers can send employees in. We can get them taken care of for whatever accidents or injuries happen on the job. But there's also another side to it, employers, which if they're in the trucking business and how much agriculture runs around a a big truck well uh, there's a lot of it and so a lot of guys now they've got to have the dot's um and so we were certified uh we've got certified providers they can they can go through and do the dot courses and get you all registered and uh and we have some discount deals and group rates and things like that for employers um, we've got some employers that send several in every week, and so um, we do quite a few of them. We try and make some deals for those guys that send in a bunch. So uh, for any employers that are listening this morning, give me a call. We'd love to set something up with you. All right, so we'll now. Do those DOPs for you. Absolutely. And also, everybody thinks because it's warming up, you can't get sick. You're immune to any sickness. You can walk around outside with hardly anything on but a T-shirt. And then all of a sudden, strep throat comes around the corner or sinus infection or other illnesses, you can help, can't you? Oh, yes, yes, you're, you're exactly right. We've Even though spring has sprung and the weather's warming up and uh, it's not getting near as freezing temperatures now every night and things like that, and most people think, oh, it's warming up, so there goes illness. We're on to warmer and better weather as well as better health and that's not always the case in fact we've been seeing a lot of strep throat lately a lot of sinus infections lately um we've even had some kind of flu-like symptoms there are some viruses of course going around but 
but there's a lot of bacterial infections still that are that are getting passed around and probably will till this all the kiddos get out of school but yes we we aren't quite immune and quite out of that season yet so if you're still feeling the sniffles or having that cough that's been bothering you for long enough come in and get that taken care of we can get that fixed up for you hey kyle real quick tell us a little bit about uh, your new websites you've been revamping things right we have yes in fact we we have revamped all of our websites for urgent care of jerome urgent care of twin falls and riverview urgent care all three locations have got new web pages we've got new pictures of staff up we've got little tidbits of of all of our staff um so it's kind of nice you can you can get familiar with who we are and and no uh, familiar face when you come into the clinic the other nice thing that gives a little background lets you know who they are and what experience and, and history they've got as well as just some down to earth little tidbits of information what some of their hobbies are and things like that the other fun thing that we've got is we've got a list of services and so there's of course, we don't have everything on there because uh, we don't have that big of a list, you know, to to put on there. But um, but we've got more of the common type things that we see and treat there, mm-hmm. and uh, and so it's handy because if you wonder, oh, they do stitches, well, you can jump on, you can check out and say, oh yes, definitely they do stitches. Oh, do they do X-ray? Oh yes, definitely they've got an in-house X-ray. Let's go. And so it's kind of helpful that way. And as you probably know, technology is changing so much that everybody has a smartphone, it seems like. And so they want to just Google something on their phone and get an address or get a phone number or something like that. And so we've got quick access online as well for those that just need to call in or need to find our address. We have a lot of people that travel uh, through Idaho. It's actually a wonderful wonderful vacation place and we've met some great people we've had people from australia to canada to all across the country come through our clinics and uh, and it never fails they've always said oh i'm sure glad we found you online and so so we really tried hard to push revamp those websites and get information up there that would that would be helpful to people all righty i'm going to tell you right now kyle you will never ever see me coming in because i fell out of a tree i can't get up there <laughs> well, sometimes it's better not to get up there in the first place, Zeb. All right. Hey, God bless you. Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Urgent Care of Jerome, Urgent Care in Twin Falls, with my buddy Kyle James. God bless you, man. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you. You do the same, Zeb. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Urgent Cares in Jerome, Twin Falls, and Burley with Riverview Urgent Care. Absolutely great places serving you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, right now, I've got to tell you quickly about our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and much more. With the professionals at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, accessible and devoted to serving you. Absolutely. Cameron and Siemens Insurance is located right there on Highway 24 in Rupert. Can't miss them. And the number to call for an appointment, write this down, 436-4424. Absolutely serving you with the best of insurance coverage, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. We're going to go to Kennel Ken in just a moment with uh, our report from Minidoka Animal Control. But first and foremost, I also want to remind you, John Lanker is running for Jerome County Sheriff. He has 18 total years' experience in law enforcement, and of course, he's also been involved as a school resource officer for seven years, coached youth sports, and mentored a youth leadership organization for 10 years, and he wants your vote on May 17th for Jerome County Sheriff John Lanker, paid for by Lanker for Sheriff Chairman Bill Watts. And also, we'd like to acknowledge that... uh, 
Running for Minidoka County Sheriff, Jeff McEwen, serving and protecting the residents of Minidoka County. And, of course, the Sheriff's Office has the resources available to do the very best job that the citizens expect from their public servants. And so Jeff McEwen says he wants that job to work for you. And he says it's time to address what our county needs, not what a few think it needs. Paid for by Jeff McEwen, Minidoka County Sheriff, Anna McEwen Treasurer. Right now, oh my goodness, let's go. Where'd all these dogs come from anyway? They're all over the place. Here now is Kennel Ken, Ken Moore with Minidoka Animal Control. Ken, you got to bear with me during election season. I am smothered, so good morning, sir. Good morning. We're doing great. Well, if you are, what's going on? Well, actually, uh, you asked me to check in to find out how they come up with the breed of, or breed of dog names. Yes, and I the did. The only thing we could find was that uh, the AKC uh, group is who has come up with those names, or if they've come from uh, other countries, the other countries have uh, have come up with those names, like the Australian Shepherd and, and stuff like that. So that that's the only thing I could find. I, I spent a lot of time Googling it and... Unfortunately, this didn't give me a lot of information. You know, I think we ought I'll do a little research on my side of the phone, and uh, it's kind of interesting. How in the world, some of these names of dogs are absolutely amazing to me as to where they came up with them. But now, right now, the problem at hand, do you have any featured animals for this week? I do. Um, we actually had an owner surrender yesterday. The people are moving and uh, are unable to take the dog with them. And that's uh, where they're moving to uh, does not allow uh, pets. So uh, they did the best thing and brought, uh, brought him in. His name is Scooter. He is a six-and-a-half-year-old Australian Shepherd. He is fully vetted, which means he is current on his rabies, all of his shots has been neutered and I mean is a wonderful dog uh, get or is great with kids uh, is uh, house broke is also uh, good with other uh, animals uh, to include uh, dogs and cats so he would make somebody a very loving loving uh, dog he does like his treats and when you see him Stephanette you can you can tell that he does like his treats like I do he put on some weight on that but uh, he, he would make somebody definitely a great house pet. Oh, what kind of a dog did you say it was again? He is an Australian Shepherd. Really? Uh, which, yeah, which, I mean, they're mostly used for your herding dogs. And it, but every once in a while, you'll come across one that actually makes a great companion dog. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. He would make. You know, I think that that breed, now, see, uh, our dog Ruby is part uh, Aussie, mini Aussie, and also, uh, what's the other half, Deanne? Help me. Corgi. Corgi, yeah. I can't remember my own dog. But anyway, uh, she's got a one-inch vertical. That's how high she can jump. It, it don't take or take that much to get to that ankle, though. Yeah, that's right. But I'll tell you what, they're really wonderful dogs with super personalities. Yes, they are. They are very smart dogs as well. I mean, they, they uh, learn quickly on that. So, I mean... If somebody when somebody works with them and stuff and that they're going to pick things up and at a at a quick pace. So he should be this dog you're talking about really could fit into a lot of situations. Yes, he could. I mean, he could turn around and be a therapy dog uh, with somebody and stuff and that who is needing a, uh, a therapy companion animal. Uh, for instance, a, a veteran and that who is needing uh, needing someone that just wants to come up and cuddle with him and stuff and that when he's feeling blue and. On that, uh, especially on that, somebody who suffers from PTSD uh-huh. uh, and, and things like that. So, I mean, he would he would definitely make a, a great uh, companion animal for somebody in need. You know, I'm sitting here thinking that uh, with our continuing study and continuing education program to find out the answers to all questions, uh, you be sure and look up the word Shih Tzu and tell me where that one came from. I can do that. And be careful how you articulate. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has questions about this dog, and what did you say his name was again? Scooter. Scooter and other dogs, all they have to do is contact you. What's going on? What's the number? Yeah, the number is 438-2200. My cell phone is 670-7268. Or the Habern Animal Control Officer, Deb Hines, at 670 670- Four three four eight. You know, you do a wonderful job, and God's blessings to you, Ken. I know we have a lot of fun on this program, but I admire what you do and how you do it. You're you're just a great guy. I appreciate it. I appreciate it as well. Have a good day, and we'll talk to you next week. 
Where'd all these dogs come from? Wheels are all over the place, for Pete's sakes. Officer Ken Mort, my buddy. I used to be his baseball coach years ago. I mean, many years ago. Oh, and of course, Minidoka Animal Control. Thank you very much. Let's see. Don't forget Cutting Edge Curbing. Oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Have you seen it? Let me tell you, it can add beauty and value to your property. Those are good words right there. Beauty and value. Cutting Edge Curbing at 424 16th Street in Rupert, number to call, 808-3360. And they've got the curbing they can install in different uh, types, like the slant edge, the mower's edge, the square, or the dome top. And it comes in different stamping, like cobblestone, uh, slate, basket weave, natural stone, and different colors. Oh, my goodness. High or semi-gloss coating. You're going to absolutely love what it does to your property. Call Sarah or Mike Baxter for an estimate right now. Cutting edge curbing, 808-3360. And without further ado, in my never-ending race to catch up on the clock, good morning, Rita Ramsey. How are you? Good morning. I'm real good. How are you? You know, you've been involved in this radio business with me for a couple of years now, but, oh, Rita, when we get behind, it's hard to catch up. <laughs> oh. well, I know the feeling. I think it's that way with anything. When you when you leave what you normally do, it doesn't, it doesn't disappear. It just gets bigger. Rita, I want to, I've got so many things I wanted to mention to you this morning, and I want to start off with this, and you can tell me again, I'm open, i got big shoulders, uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but right now, this morning, I said, it's enough. It's absolutely time to close the book. The Republican Party has got to get things put together now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but now they've got to mend the fences with everything, or... The evil left with Hillary is going to take over this country, and we can't absorb the evil that she will put in this country. Do you agree with me or not? Oh, absolutely. The, the, the deal is is that we have got to a point of where everybody, and I mean, you have to be blind not to know it, everybody in this nation knows that we are at a turning point, and our nation is broken, and if we don't do something... We are going to lose it, and it is going to be really, really bad. And if we get Hillary in there, or Bernie never will, but if we get Hillary in there, we are going to have really, really bad stuff happen. And this is one reason why people have got to, to say, okay, you know what, I guess my guy isn't going to win, and, and I'll go with the other one. But um, there's, there's just a lot of consequences that are going to come down on us. And, you know, earlier there were a number of people that called in and were really irritated that Mike Simpson doesn't have any opponents and that, you know, we keep getting some of these whoever we get. Well, the reason that we have who we have is because the majority of the people don't care enough to make any mistake or make any changes. And until you get people who will get involved, you know, I heard one guy call in and he said, you know, you can have meetings and hardly anybody shows up to them. You know, can't somebody organize something? Well, I've been organizing Tea Party meetings now for seven years, and we don't have a very big crowd compared to what we really ought to have. But if everybody would cared enough to get involved, it wouldn't take very much to let some of these senators and congressmen know that you have a voice and you're going to get them booted out of there if they don't make some good choices and and you've got a little bit of strength but if everybody just keeps going oh well it doesn't matter simpson sounds fine i know him and and you just ignore it you get you get what you got it oh, doesn't matter yeah well right there you get what you got all right wait a minute we can't afford to get what we've got and i'll tell you what i think i think that i'll go back again if they don't stop this nitpicking whether it's ranch Priebus, the head of the rnc whether it's trump whether it's cruz i don't care who shut up and mend the fences today because after what i saw yesterday 
when I studied this tax plan that Hillary Clinton is going to use in her first day in office attitude, including raising one trillion dollars. Uh, Rita, one trillion T R I L L I O N dollars out of our pocketbooks to give free college and paid family leave. Rita, we can't have that kind of idiocy in the White House. You're absolutely right. The problem is, is that isn't the only thing that Hillary wants. If you start looking into a little bit of information, you find out that um, Hillary um, is still on her, we're going to tax the guns, but it's not actually about taxing guns, which she went for back in the 90s. She was just, you know, in 93, she was behind and pushing senators, hey, do this, and, you know, we got to get this gun thing under control, and that's basically what they want. Um, I actually saw an article that um, in the Mariana Islands, they uh, have, have approved a paying tax of $1,000 per gun. Now, what that actually means is they're not only going to tax your guns, how are they going to tax you if they don't know you have them? And if they know you have them, are they going to take them away from you? It's all a part of a plan of being in control. And so the Mary Island, Mariana Islands have done that. Seattle has a $25 gun tax. So you've got a lot of governments, uh, whether they're state, city, or, or whatever, looking at, well, this is a good revenue getter. But more what it is is that this is a control. It has nothing to do with the primary thing of raising money. It has to do with knowing where the guns are and being able to take control of them if that's what you want to do. And that is what Hillary's deal is, is she wants control of them. Obama has tried like crazy to get guns under control his whole time he's been in. Every time there was some kind of a thing with a gun, he, they would jump right on it. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to have gun control laws and da 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 So they jumped on it every time, and they're not going to just stop when they get a new president, Hillary. You know, what you just said, though, is extremely worrisome, and I'll add to it. Hillary has voiced on numerous occasions from way back two years ago or more that she would be more than amenable to studying and using the Australian gun control methods, and it's nothing more than a gun confiscation takeaway program. And I'll tell you what, America, look out. Hillary is knocking on your door. Well, that's exactly right. And people keep saying, well, if they come to my door, I'm not going to give up my guns. Well, the thing of it is, is they don't just all of a sudden have, have a gun day where they're going to send everybody out to collect guns. It's just a little bit at a time, one thing or the other. There's questions in Obamacare. Do you have guns in your family? Who has guns? Do they have guns? They can't have guns because they had some kind of a mental thing or some kind of an issue with anger or, or whatever it is. So they just start doing it a little bit at a time and creeping in there, kind of like the, the frog in the pot of cool water, and then all of a sudden it starts getting a little warmer and a little warmer, and then pretty soon he's cooked because he didn't pay attention when it was starting to warm up just a little bit. But that's the way that they do things, and people are naive enough to think, oh, it's not a big deal today. Just like, you know, whoever it was that called in and said, I got better things to do. I don't have time to go to a tea party meeting, meet with all those people, find out what's going on, you know, or, or I don't have time to go over to a meet the whatever it is and meet the candidates or support them or go out and talk to my neighbors about it. Those are the people who are letting the water get warmer and warmer and warmer. And like I said earlier, we have who we got, and that's what we get because that's what we ask for. You know, Rita, I start today, as a matter of fact, at 1032, a new segment on our program called Our Second Amendment. And uh, my dear friend Ryan Horsley is going to get on. He's very, very knowledgeable of what's going on with guns and possible confiscation programs. And I really appreciate your comments, and I urge everybody to tune in at 1032 this morning. Uh, Rita, I want to ask you about this. I absolutely sat in my geezer chair and was so mad, I slammed my fist down and I broke the right arm of my geezer chair. When I saw the Russian fighter jets buzzing 
our naval ships 30 feet, 30 feet off the top of the ship. What in the world? We, they don't respect us. They're laughing at us. They are laughing at us, and this isn't the first time that this has happened. My big question is, what are we doing about it? Are we just ignoring it and saying, man, they came awful close, and, well, maybe it was just because there was a, a Polish uh, plane fueling up or, or whatever it is. That's not the case. Putin is trying to see how far he can go, and he knows he can go a long ways with our commander-in-chief. And so he's just testing the waters, see what they can do, and um, I, I'm still not so sure that, uh, that he won't be the guy that goes in to, um, to rescue Europe because they're overridden with, with, uh, with refugees and they can't take control of it anymore and, and they, they're just in big trouble and, and Putin will go in there and pretty soon he'll be in charge of all of Europe as well. That's how that, those things happen is they just, they just uh, intrude a little bit at a time until until it's done and the people kind of going holy cow look what's happened in the last two years they don't do it all of a sudden they just do a little bit at a time see how far they can go and that's why it's important that we have a commander-in-chief that isn't going to push a red reset button or something like that we need to have somebody like reagan who said hey we are going to have peace through strength and you're not going to come after us without there being consequences. You know, I thought about what you just said earlier this morning. As a matter of fact, you took some of the words right out of my mouth. I was thinking when I got up at quarter to four this morning and I saw that uh, Russian fighter pilot and uh, the jets that were with him literally buzz in defiance and mocking our ships, our naval ships. And I thought, how would Ronald Reagan or Bush react to that? And I guarantee you that without knowing exactly the circumstances and them being in office at this particular time, I guarantee you the Russians would have buzzed their last ship. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, we can, uh, we can be all mad at George, George W. Bush for starting the, the wars that he did and and getting us involved over in the Middle East. But nevertheless, he let them know, you're not going to do that to us without there being some consequences. And then, then it just kind of all went awry after that, and then you get a new president, and he just kind of like, okay, we're not going to do this anymore, and, and pulled everybody out. There's a big vacuum, and now we've got ten times the trouble that we had. But you, you have to have somebody that will go in and say, you know what? This is what we're going to do, and this is why we're going to do it. And we're going to be strong. We're going to put that Star Wars, I think it was called the Star Wars, and Star, whatever it was, that, that shield over in Europe mm -hmm. to protect the, the Europeans from, from Putin. The dome. We're going to put that yeah. back in place, and we are going to make sure that you don't encroach on anybody's boundaries. And we're, we're going to show you that we intend to stand up against you. And as long as you have somebody like that, Putin can't, can't get very far. But if you have people who just say, oh, yeah, that's not important. We're, we don't need to worry about that. We're just going to think about the United States of America right here at home. And, you know, you, you've got libertarians that it's kind of like, well, we don't need to be all over the world. The problem is, is that we do need to be all over the world because if we're not... We're going to have trouble right in our own backyard before we know it. You know, I would love to hear the phone call, the transcript of the phone call with, uh, let's use Ronald Reagan. Hello, Vladimir. This is Ronald. How you doing? Well, I just wanted to call you today and let you know that three of your Russian MiGs and your fighter pilots buzzed our uh, naval ships, and they were about 30 feet above the ship, and I just want to let you know that you're going to have three less planes by 4 o'clock this afternoon. Afternoon, if you pull that garbage again, we've got to get tough with these people, Rita. Well, and you know, the press secretary didn't even have an answer for it. Well, we we're not really sure what's going on there. And, uh, yeah, we know yeah, what yeah. happened, and we're going to be dealing with it. And it's like, yeah, sure you are. Yeah, we got a caller with a question. Quickly, caller, uh, go ahead with your comment. Yeah, good morning, Rita and Zeb. Uh, you know, you talk about in your backyard. Well, we've got them in our backyard right now with this uh, Muslim in, in invasion. And our, our elected people need to be reminded there's an Article 4, Section 4, and it says they are taking 
oath of office to protect us against invasion. It doesn't say a standing army. We're being invaded, I mean, with open borders and with the situation with Obama wanting more and more. I mean, in the last 10 years, we brought in almost just through regular migration, almost 2 million Muslims as it is. They're taking over various towns. I'd like you to comment about that because this is not going to go away until we get it stopped and we're going to become Europe really quick. I agree. It won't take very long before they ruin our valley just like they have other places already. I agree with you, Adrian. Thank you. Rita, before you make a comment on it, I'll go right in the fray with Adrian. I am absolutely not going to quit fighting the CSI Refugee Center. I am not going to quit fighting the Times News. I am not going to quit fighting the mayoral leader, if you want to call him that, of Twin Falls. I absolutely am calling for a halt to immigration because, quite frankly, they don't know, they being our government and the leadership of our government, they haven't got a clue who's coming in here. Well, they absolutely don't. And the thing of it is, is we should learn from Europe. You can go on to, to different uh, web news websites and find out that there's numbers upon numbers of articles about how these folks are, are going in. And, you know, we, we've got to pull, push back on the... Um, on the border fence, it, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, wasn't Yugoslavia, it might have been one of the other ones over there. Anyway, they're, they're trying to protect part of them, they're trying to get some of them out of there. Sweden has been totally invaded, they have become the rape capital of the world, and it's because these Muslim men don't have to, to honor or, or do anything that would, would um, prevent them from raping regular women who are not Muslim women. And, and so you've got that, you've got all of these other migrants just uh, everywhere. They're coordinating all kinds of problems, and, and uh, that's going to be right here in our backyard if we don't do something. And, you know, you can uh, be in meetings where people say, well, you know, we've got to be compassionate. And it's like, yeah, we'll be compassionate when we have some real, some real uh, refugees who are here because they are refugees from a, a, bad, a bad government or a political, you know, uh, uh, oppression. But they're, they're just bringing them in. It's all about the money. It's not about really rescuing people that are in need. It's just about the money. Yep. And these people are going to become jihadists because they don't have other people to associate with. You get these young guys that they can get on the Internet, and they all speak the same language. They don't speak the language here. So they're all, you know, coordinating together, and pretty soon you've got a, you've got a, a pack of dogs. And, and that's what we're going to get if we don't start doing something. And it's all about the money. Yes, it is. Rita, thank you. Have patience for about 60 seconds. Time for our weather forecast brought to you by Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, yes, 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 you and your family will enjoy the comfort. All you have to do is call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. Here's Gina with the weather. Here's a look at your weather for today. We do have some uh, rain showers in the forecast. Plus, yes, it is going to be windy because we do live in southern Idaho. Out of the west, right around 24 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 53. Tonight, low of 34. Tomorrow, looks like partly cloudy skies, but the winds are going to stick around. High of 57 with an overnight low of 33. And then for the weekend, absolutely beautiful. Looks like sunny skies. Highs are going to be in the mid to upper 60s, maybe even 70. Yesterday's high was 60 and the overnight low was 43. That is your weather. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gina. Brought to you by Ramsey Heating and Electric, along with Lennox, providing warm winters and cool summers. We're on the air with Rita Ramsey. Rita, uh, another story I wanted to get into a little bit this morning is um, the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement. I was listening intently, and I know you probably heard this story. To a manufacturer that's here in the United States that has built and manufactured the uniforms and the shoes for our military, an American company, Rita, the Obama administration canceled the contract with this man's company as of yesterday and gave the contract to a foreign country so that it would show good favor for the passing of the TPP. This is lunacy! 
Well, all he's doing is trying to justify what he's got going, and it is absolutely horrible. And, and people ought to be up in arms about this. The thing of it is, we've got some political things going, and everybody is so interested in that that you're not hearing all of this other stuff that's just kind of sliding in under the door. I mean, you can't get news people um, to pick up those stories and run them. You, you know, it's, it's all about... Well, Cruz stole the votes from Trump today, and Trump was over at this. And I mean, you don't you don't hear anything else. You hardly hear anything about Hillary and Bernie fighting at each, at each other. And it's because the the mainstream media, Trump media, is trying to get the GOP out there so they look like a bunch of idiots and discount all of it. And and uh, then they'll have a big war when when one of them actually gets over there to fight against Hillary. But all of this stuff that's happening, it's like I've said it before, you can kind of watch what the right hand's doing, but watch what the left hand's doing because it's behind you doing all kinds of stuff and we're not paying attention to it. And, and by not paying attention, I mean we're not just up in arms about it. There ought to be all kinds of people just totally upset about all this and, and yet it's, it's not even uh, worth, you know, putting on a news, on a news flash. Let me go back to something you said about 10 minutes ago. And I'm, I'm certainly not taking uh, issue with what you said, but I don't totally agree with it. I'm scared. I really am scared of the evil Democratic left. Now, when I say that, I have to incorporate wild-haired Bernie. You said there's no way that he'll get elected. But you know, Rita, I didn't think there was a snowball's chance in the oven that he would get this far and win eight out of the last primary states, eight out of nine, and have all the millennials just flocking to him, a large set of the Hollywood weirdos following him. Rita, let's not uh, say that stupidity can't win. Well, stupidity might be able to win the popular vote, but they're not going to win with the with the uh, the delegates because all of the delegates are pledged to Hillary. I mean, you can look at that and find out that you know if Bernie was smart, he'd take his money and go home because he is not going to end up getting it. He they have got it so in the tank for Hillary that I mean they've got super delegates all over everywhere. Every every race he wins. She gets more delegates plus the super delegates. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the point I'm making, though, Rita, that I wanted you to address in the last couple of minutes, it's scary to me that the millennials, the gimme, 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 wannabe, 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 never will crowd, that don't want to work, don't want to be responsible, etc., they're all poised behind Bernie and, boy, the problems they can cause in our society. Well, that's absolutely right, and it comes down to one thing, education. There's a lot of those people who are in college, and they have college educations, but they weren't taught anything about the Constitution and about capitalism and those kinds of things that make the country work. And so automatically it's like, well, yeah, I'm tired of looking for a job, and I spend a lot of money getting a college education, and I can't get a job, or if I have a job, it's... It's way below my my level of what I should be able to make because of my education and that type of thing, and and it's kind of like well well doesn't everybody just give us everything and it just comes back to the mentality of how they were raised from kindergarten on up everything's okay everybody's equal it's basically socialistic the way that the way that they do it when you have. Um, ball games and you don't keep score and when everybody gets a, either a smiley face or if you don't get a smiley face you don't get anything but at least you know it wasn't a frowny face making you feel bad or or red ink cro you know marking up your page because you didn't have the right answers it, it just all boils down to that these people are uninformed they do not know about the constitution they don't know how capitalism works and and until they start learning that, they're going to be all for the free stuff, and you add them on top of the people that are already getting the free stuff, and it will cause a collapse, and that's what it boils down to. Yeah, it is, and, and I totally agree with everything you said, and thinking whether it's Bernie, whether it's Hillary, with offering free college. You know, that I've only got a minute left, but I was so mad last night when I heard her say that, well, we're going to have all this money for $350 billion of college subsidies. Rita, I paid for my own through my own hard work, and that installed a work ethic in me and responsibility. We're going to give it to these kids? Are you crazy? 
Well, that just is the entitlement me- entitlement mentality of of the generation. These these last few generations that have come up, it's like, well, aren't you going to give me this and aren't you going to give me that? And those of us who have worked for it, or we worked and helped our kids get through it, and now our kids are are looking at them saying, hey, we didn't have any free stuff. We had to go in and work for it. But you've, you've just got a, a bad situation where everybody's saying, well, I'm just going to go ahead and jump on that and get it. It doesn't matter where the subsidies come from. There are subsidies out there for about anything you can ha- practically think about, unless you just want to be in business and earn your own way. And, and it's, it's really bad, and it's going to destroy our system, and we will collapse because we can't have a very, very small amount earning and making money and 60 or 70 percent sitting on top, smashing it down, saying, absolutely get the free stuff. Absolutely. Rita, I am way over time. I've got to run, but God bless you. Very good conversation this morning. Thank you so much. Okay, we've got to meet the sheriff uh, candidates tonight at our meeting at 7 o'clock, so I'd like to see a, a room full of people there. Where's it going to be, quickly? At the city of Burley in the city council chamber. All right, Rita, God bless. Thank you so much. Okay, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Rita Ramsey, thank you. And like I said, I'm running behind. Hurry, Zev. Roger Morley is running for re-election for District 3, Jerome County Commissioner. He has served as a county commissioner in Jerome for the last two terms and has also been an Idaho State lobbyist and is also a Jerome County Planning and Zoning member. And I'll tell you what, he knows what needs to be done in Jerome. He has the experience needed to make another great county commissioner. Roger Morley, running for District 3, Jerome County County Commissioner, paid for by Lorraine Morley, Treasurer, and be sure to vote on May 17th. Oh my goodness, if you're hungry, (laughs) I'm I'm hurrying, and starving to death, don't forget, burgers, etc. At 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley, they've got corn dogs and burritos on special after 3 p.m. I don't know the price, it's not on my paper, but Deanne will find it for me. And they've also got every Sunday Day. Shrimp dinner specials at the Burley store. The food is great. The people are really friendly at Burgers, etc. 124 South Oneida, Rupert 700, Overland in Burley. How about El Caparral? 610 North Overland in Burley. This is a great place to eat. And they welcome everybody for lunch and dinner and drinks and parties. Celebrate your own special occasion. Ladies night every Wednesday night. Margarita's two for one. <laughs> Look out! Da-da-da. Luncheon specials Monday through Friday at El Caporal, 610 North Overland in Burley. How about the AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley? Oh, ho, ho, that chicken fried steak sandwich. Oh, it's delicious with the fries and any kind of a flavored shake you want. And the famous Farmer Brown Burgers and the Ranch Burgers. Oh, my goodness, you're going to love the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley. And we drive across the bridge right now. Steve-O's, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Food made the way you love it. Oh my goodness, happy 21st birthday to Steve-O's on April 20th. It's coming up. They're getting old. They're getting great. They've always been. Great food. Buffalo burgers made from real buffalo. And of course, fresh hand-cut steak fries or regular fries. Special sauce. I mean, my goodness sakes, you're going to love them. And Steve's nacho fries, Topped with cheese and jalapeno peppers. Stevo's 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And last but not least, the Taco Bandito 2301 Overland and Burley. Oh boy, they got those Taco Bandito burritos with bacon and jalapeno. I love it. Steak breakfast burritos. And they've got it all, all on the menu for you, and it's delicious. You got to stop in and check it out today at Taco Bandito, newly remodeled for your comfort at 20. 2301 Overland in Burley. Yes, sir, Bob. Those are some great places to go if you're hungry and starving to death. Got to run to the news, figuratively. Here's Wheels, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Welcome back. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Welcome back. Good morning. Zeb at the Ranch on a Thursday. And, of course, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call 734-6969. We're going to have them on the program with us a little bit later on this half hour. Uh, before we go any further, I also want to remind you that Tim Darrington is running for Cache County Commissioner, District 3, as a lifelong resident of Cache County, as a farmer and a rancher. His desire is to impact the lives of Cache County in a very positive way and protect our natural resources of land, air, and water. He encourages job opportunities, new industry, and smart growth. He is running for Cache County Commissioner, District 3, Tim Darrington. Vote May 17th. Paid for by Darrington for Commissioner Gail Erickson, Chairman. Uh, by the way, too, <clears throat> pardon me, I had a little bit of thro- frog in my throat this morning. want to remind you about a community breakfast coming up this Saturday at the Golden Heritage Senior Center in Burley. Community breakfast on Saturday morning. It's going to be from 8 until 10 a.m. at 2421 Overland Avenue in Burley. It's going to be fantastic menu. All kinds of great breakfast goodies. Come bring your family, friends, and neighbors. Everybody is welcome at that breakfast at the Golden Heritage on Saturday morning from 8 to 10 a.m. And with that in mind, don't forget to our friends at Linux Home Comfort Systems with our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will always enjoy the comfort. Don't forget, call the number at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric can save you money. Don't forget Ramsey's and Lennox. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I don't know why I got that frog in my throat. been doing great all morning, and all of a sudden it just jumped right in there, so I apologize for that. Uh, coming up in just a few moments, we're going to have our Cache County School Days. And, of course, it's brought to you by two wonderful businesses. First of all, the Child's World. A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley. Oh, my goodness. The baby registries are there. And they've got all the baby furniture. And they've got all the outfits and the spring and summer dresses. Oh, my goodness. And the Cherokee scrubs. The list goes on and on. Get on in there today and see some really nice people serving you at a child's world 1308 overland in burley and also ambulatory surgery center my goodness we brag on these folks and they are worthy of it great job with outpatient surgeries whether it's knee arthroscopic surgery life-saving colonoscopies uh, cataract surgery sinus surgeries all of this and more please call the number 677-8888-1344 highland in burley it's the ambulatory surgery center along with the child's world bringing you School days in Cache County. I am uh, very fortunate to have the friendship and the professionalism of this gentleman on our program this morning. And he is the superintendent of Cache County Schools, Galen Smyer. Good morning, Galen. How are you? I'm doing well, Zeb, and how are you? Well, I am, I'm fine. Uh, I had to take a little respite yesterday and run to Salt Lake, but we're back. We're good. We're in the saddle this morning. But I am very, very concerned about a newspaper story uh, that started a couple days ago about two really worthless human beings as far as their attitude on possibly molesting and abducting children. And it happened in Burley at the Burley school system with White Pine Intermediate. Uh, boy, I am so glad glad these kids were able to fend off these men. Give us a little uh, background of this story, and I know you as the superintendent are extremely concerned about the future. Well, that's exactly right, Zeb. Uh, it first brought, was brought to our attention when uh, three young ladies right at the beginning of school came in to the principal and said, we have observed uh, a man out on the out on the school property, out near where the buses enter the White Pine School, and one of those, or, or the man, was beckoning to the to the 
to the girls, trying to entice them to, to come over to him. And they they didn't. They were a considerable distance away, but they ran in and, and reported that. So the principal went out uh, with the girls and said, okay, show me where you were, who, what you saw, where the individual was. And when they got back out there, nobody there. And so he went back into the building and, and just alerted all of his staff. He said, there's been a report of somebody who's been on, on campus. Well, please uh, have a heightened alert. I had, they didn't lock down. It didn't appear that there was, at that point, any immediate uh, threat, but that there was, there was a concern. So there was a heightened alert for that. And then later in the day, a young lady came forward and said that she had been walking to school along Elmo and uh, had been grabbed by the arm and then was able to break free and get to the school. So at that point, uh, we notified law enforcement, or the school officials did, and, and asked them to come investigate and also to, to provide additional patrol in the area. And it, it just so happened that uh, after they got the chance to interview the, the young people and their parents and, and put the pieces of the puzzles together, they were able to, to identify the two suspects and, and eventually arrested them. And uh, as the, the investigation continues, we're continuing to learn additional things that there, there may have been some previous stalking and, and some things like that. So we're we're learning things on a daily basis uh, as as the police investigation has been very thorough, and we're we're so appreciative of their quick response. But uh, we we also are, are appreciative of the, the young ladies and their their coming forward quickly so that uh, we could be a, alert to. The potential threat. Galen, I want to stress this point, and I want you to elaborate on it. It doesn't make any difference if it's New York City. It doesn't make any difference if it's Portland, Oregon. It doesn't make any difference if it's Pendleton, Oregon, Twin Falls, or Burley. It can happen anywhere, and parents and children and school systems need to be aware there are bad people lurking out there. That's exactly right, Zab, and we we feel very fortunate and blessed to to live in this area and raise our families here because we don't have to put up with a lot of the things that that occur in some in other more populated areas with maybe different values and points of view and so we we and it, it's we have a tendency at times to become a bit complacent about things and, with, and that's been of concern to us in, in the school system for, for several years. And we have worked with the sheriff's department, the fire department, to deal with evacuations and drills and things like that. So that we have our routines and protocols in place. But most recently, uh, the legislature's appropriated some funding to, to bring some outside inspectors in that uh, are totally objective. They, they don't know anything about our community. They don't know anything about um, the, just that we've got a school and, and they, they'll come in and do a very thorough assessment of our procedures, routines. They're assessing school security and safety. And I, and I have to stress that once upon a time, safety was fire drills and maybe fights on the playground. But now we have to add to that security, and this is the very kind of an issue that that arose on Monday that we're having to to be conscientious of, of that potential and and plan for it and, and adjust for it, and and we're uh, we're pleased that uh, Casa County at least I think about ten of our seventeen schools now have had the benefit of having these people come in. And once they, after they come in, then they'll debrief, and we do that in presence with law enforcement and, and fire people to, to, again, reaffirm the things that we're doing correctly, and they offer suggestions for things we might do better. And uh, we, we learn from that, and, and as we do, we learn from every 
every situation. I would say this, and I'm saying this as a parent, as a grandfather, and a concerned citizen. And I reiterated this on my program a thousand times about terrorists or any activity that's illegal or illicit. If you see something or someone that doesn't just quite match up to normal, say something. Would you agree with that, Galen? Absolutely. And we as school people wear identification. And when parents come into the school, they're asked to, to stop and register and get a, a visitor's badge. And, and that's so that students are, are aware when people are out of place. And we count uh, the, the number of students to teacher is, is pretty high ratio, but we count on those students to help us look out for each other. And uh, wh when I walk into a school, particularly early in the year when the students are not, they don't recognize me, I'll see them glance to, to look to see if I have a badge. And that, that's reassuring to know that they're at least looking. But you're right. The important thing is, is then when you see something that's amiss, uh, to report it. And it's not uncommon for us to encounter strangers. But when we encounter strangers that that maybe have a, a little different uh, plan in mind for us, or they're acting aggressive, or they're doing something that's that's untoward, we we need to to notify somebody. And we're encouraging our young people to. To, to play together and then if they see something like that to make sure to report it uh, so that we can look into it and many times it's nothing but when it is something as was the case on Monday we're so appreciative that we were able to get on to it quickly and that was due in large part to those young ladies coming forward and say, and then there's something amiss. Yeah, but there's another point, too, I want you to elaborate on. And I'm one of these guys and fathers and grandfathers that absolutely wants ultimate safety for my family, your family, everybody's family. I stress the fact, Galen, that if these children are walking alone to and from school, maybe there's got to be a better way or a better method or maybe alternative sources to where they could make arrangements to walk with someone else. Uh, the singular walking pattern to and from school is dangerous. It is, and it's predictable. Uh, it doesn't take very long for someone that's, that's maybe got ill intent to, to figure out someone's routine and then to be able to take advantage of that uh, in an inopportune time. And so that's exactly right. Parents need to, to have those conversations with their, their children and try to have them walk together in, in uh, neighborhood groups. I know numerous parents that walk with, with their child either singly or will walk and take turns and, and with a half a dozen from the surrounding homes and, and walk to school so that there's some additional supervision and security. But yes, we can't take for granted the fact that we can, we will be safe uh, continually just because that's always been the case up to now. I do agree with you wholeheartedly on your comment in the newspaper story that you decided to go with the teachers talking to the class in a smaller setting than a large class assembly. Sometimes the kids get in assemblies and they kind of look at each other and joke and kid around, but I think the teachers can be much more poignant and direct to the students. Well, the other part of that, in a small group setting, if if somebody does have some information, they're oftentimes more comfortable sharing that in a small, familiar group than what they would be in a large group setting, where it's where it's more intimidating. And we we definitely want those want our students to feel comfortable in being able to to share with and confide in the adults in their life so that uh, we can help keep them safe because it, it truly is a we zab as you emphasized on numerous occasions that we have to look out for each other absolutely and, uh, and as, as citizens that's how a lot of crimes are prevented or crimes are solved in our communities because observant people are noticing things that are a little off a little amiss and and reporting that 
and again, oftentimes it's nothing. It, it, it's uh, it, it turns out to be nothing, but the, the number of times that it is something, it just makes us, you know, thank our lucky stars that people are being observant. And I know, in, as in, in, it's a protection for our homes and for us, for our persons, uh, it, it extends beyond the school and community. It, it's our greater community. Galen, I want to say how much I appreciate you coming on the program this morning. I know there wasn't a lot of time to prepare for this this morning, but you did a wonderful job. It's a very serious subject and one that we're going to stay up on top of. Any new information, please call us. But I want to say thank you to the Cache County School Superintendent Galen Smyer for being on Cache County School Days this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Zeb, and have a great day. Thank you very much. A very serious subject, protecting our kids to and from and on the school grounds. These two guys, I'm just going to make my own personal opinion on this. These two guys, these absolute worthless human beings that would go and try to kidnap or lure children away from a playground or lure them into a bad, very dangerous situation, I certainly hope that they literally lose the key for their cell. I hope they absolutely never get out. I have no use for these kind of people. Uh, We're going to be, in just a minute, going to talk with Joe Renfro with Western Way Services. So stand by for that. I want to go back and tell you that we found out uh, in the last uh, Starving to Death, I wanted to point out to you that those, i got to get the deal here. Hold on just a second. What did I do with it? The corn dogs and burritos at Burgers, etc. in Rupert and Burley, 99 cents after 3 p.m. So don't forget that great buy. Okay, let's go to the phone lines, and I get a chance to talk to a good old boy, Joe Renfro with Western Waste Services. Good morning, Joe. How you doing? I'm sorry about that, sir, but I tried calling him, and it just goes to his voicemail. Deanne, he's not available. Could you try to reach him? Uh, Keep trying that number, would you please? Yes, sir. All right, and in that turn, I will sit here and go, oh, goody, I didn't have uh, plans for the next seven minutes. I will tell you about our good friends, of course, at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. You be sure and contact them today to get on the route service. And, of course, that route service, very, very good as far as you can almost set your watch by them. Locally owned and operated, always at your disposal, 734 696 Nine Western Way Services. And um, Wheels, would you mind giving me the number that you're dialing to make sure that everything's okay on the information that we sent you? Yeah, it's 941-2892. No, you've got them reversed, 2982. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, call right away. Okay. All right. Uh, I just wanted to check. He had the number reversed. We'll get Joe on the phone, hopefully, in just the next very few minutes. I believe he is the sales manager with our friends at Western Way Services, and uh, hopefully we can get him on the line in just a second. I want to remind you that at 1032 this morning, we're going to have our first installment of the Second Amendment, and we're going to have Ryan Horsley on the program with us talking about the government and their anti-gun stance, what's happening with guns on a national level and uh, very, very evil things happening with the Democrats and the left in a possible gun confiscation program. So we're going to be talking to Ryan about that in a few moments. Do you have him on the air? I'm getting him on. All right, let's go. Let's go. Time is wasting. And uh, we've got to get him on here real quick. Joe Renfro with the Western Way Services. And the number to call for any and all information, 734-6969. Has he answered the phone wheels? No, sir. You said uh, 941-9228? Wheels, I told you twice, 941-2982. Please call that number. Oh, okay. All right, we'll get him on. <laughs> Easy. Temper, 
Cool. There, put an ice cube on my head. There we go. Uh, don't forget, next Monday at 10.30 a.m., we're going to have Dr. Alvin Schmidt, author and professor, on our program. And we're going to be talking about how some on the left are equating Muslims' Allah with our Christian God, saying they are one and the same. And we're going to dispute that ignorance and have Dr. Alvin Schmidt on our program next Monday at 10.30. Do you have him, sir? I'm getting it. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, waiting for Doctor. Pardon me, <laughs> Joe Renfro with Western Way Services, and uh, we'll have him on the air momentarily. And is he there by his phone, or we're going to have to cancel it for this week? Um, I'm trying to get to it, but the phone seems to not be wanting me to get through. Okay, what number did you dial again, Wheels? Uh, nine four one nine two. Eight, Wheels, I have I've mentioned that. Never mind, Wheels. Thank you. you. You have the wrong number. You you are not listening to me. It's two nine eight two. Oh, okay. I will. I'll do that real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, I want to reiterate: this is live radio, and things like this happen. And uh, hopefully, we'll get it rectified. Joe's waiting for us, and we're waiting for him. And uh, hopefully, we can get him on at least for a short excerpt of what he was going to talk about this morning. In our dear friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Do you have him now? I I don't. For some reason, it won't let me connect through, sir. <laughs> and I put down the number that you... All have. right. Well, we'll forget that for this morning, and we'll call and issue an apology to Joe that we couldn't get through. And we'll try to stick him on Monday morning. Uh, comedy of errors and uh, laugh and smile. It's just life. And uh, we're getting ready in just a few moments. We're going to have uh, Second Amendment with Ryan Horsley. Again, a quick reminder that... But at the Golden Heritage Senior Center Community Breakfast on this Saturday coming up April 16th from 8 in the morning until 10 and it's at 2421 Overland Avenue in Burley. Don't forget to call your friends and neighbors and have everybody be in attendance for that great big breakfast on Saturday. We're going to send it back over to our main studios right now and we'll be back in just a few moments with the Second Amendment with Ryan Horsley. Now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Welcome back, last half hour, and I'm very honored to have this next guest on my program. We're going to try to do this at least bi-monthly, twice a month on this show, and it's called Our Second Amendment, and it all is in regards to the Second Amendment of our Constitution of the United States about our right to bear arms. Of course, if you don't know what the Second Amendment says, we will start off by reading a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And that's why I wanted to call upon my dear friend Ryan Horsley at Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I am excellent, Zeb. Ryan, little by little, day by day, it gets worse with concerns over what may happen with the uh, restrictions or cancellation of our Second Amendment. And uh, give me kind of a catch-all as to you, a gun store owner, what you think is happening right now. Is there a movement to take away our guns? Is there an evil left that wants to do away with the Second Amendment? You know, I think that there's just, um, I I think that there is, you know, enough out there to be concerned about in in other states. You know, you you see the, you know, I think that they, you know, are always, you have a lot of people, the anti-gun groups that, you know, are always um, waiting for the opportune time. And, you know, you you have... um, you know, you have more and more celebrities speaking out about it and wait, waiting for some tragedy to happen to um, jump on it. it was, it's, um, 
you know, I, I think this just this last week he even had um, Sean Payton, who is the uh, um, coach of the New New Orleans Saints, basically saying, "I hate guns, and I don't think anyone should own one." And it's just that, you know, it's it's you know when crime happens or or when something like that happens, it's it's their fix all. Going okay, well let's let's just take them all away. And as you know, and as we've seen in other countries, that's that's not going to fix it. You know, it's um, it's not going to fix it. In fact, it's just going to make things worse for the law-abiding citizens. You know, and we see and we hear our politicians uh, that come out with what exactly you told us, uh, that, uh, you know, the guns uh, kill people. We've got to put an infringement on owning them. We've got to take them away. But yet, Ryan, why don't they understand the evil criminal element will never turn in a gun on a, on a, a free welfare giveaway program or confiscation? They're not going to get rid of their weapons. No, they're not. And, and you know, and, and frankly, a lot of politicians just simply, you know, do lip service. And, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I think even, you know, hitting home, you know, recently, you, you've got Second Amendment Alliance, um, Idaho Second Amendment Alliance, um, right now um, going after, um, you know, Maxine Bell for her votes on guns because it's, um, you know, and it's, it's um, you know, I have a lot of people who say, you know, coming in saying, hey, what's going on? You know, I've, I've always heard good things about Maxine, and but at the same time, you get a lot of people who, um, you know, frankly, just, um, you know, politicians who begin just being out of touch and, and start buying into, you know, a lot of this, well, you know what, maybe, maybe it is better off. And, uh, you know, even having, um, you know, in the um, uh, constitutional carry debate, you know, that, you know, Bloomberg's groups were... Um, you know, providing money for that, you know, try and shut that campaign. But, um, you know, we have enough legislators who, you know, approve constitutional carries. So it's, you know, it's it's really, you know, nailing down your politicians and saying, you know, you know, your elected leaders and saying, how do you, you know, how do you really feel on this? And, you know, and, and making sure that they do grasp that and make sure that they, you know, grasp that that's something very important to you. But where are we exactly, Ryan? You work in this every day. You know more about this than anyone I know because this is your business. Where are we? What are our concerns today with uh, about 279 days left with Obama and lurking in the background is Hillary Clinton that has come out and stated many times that she would look at the Australian gun confiscation program. Where are we? Don't people understand how dangerous this is? It is, it is dangerous, and, and, you know, and as, you know, I, and, and not only that, but, you know, we, we get a lot of people who are, you know, um, all for Trump as well, and, and Trump has been, um, you know, on, on both sides of the matter. That, that's concerning as well. I, I think we all, you know, the, the thing is that we all know where Bernie Sanders stands. We all know where Hillary Clinton stands. You know, um, Trump's gone back and forth, and, you know, and, and you know, and a lot of people will say, you know, boy, he said this, but yeah, but he also said this. I'd, I'd at least like to know where, you know, where someone stands on something, and when push comes to shove, if, if they're going to continue to stand by that. So I, I think that's concerning as well. You know, I, I think that as a state, you know, I, I think that we're good. I think that, you know, I, I think that we are, we have proactive groups and, um, you know, a proactive legislature that you know is well uh, somewhat continuing to move move forward to um, you know continue to secure our uh, our Second Amendment rights for the most part, but I think that uh, you know federally it's up in the air, and and again you know people you know try and talk about states' rights and everything like that, but you know when it boils down to it, when push comes to shove, and we've seen this as well that you know. Federal, you know, federal trumps um, states' rights, and um, federal rights trumps straight, states' rights, and that's that's how it goes. So, you know, people need to continue to get out there and voice their opinion, and and you know, and may, maybe we are just one, you know, one more tragedy away from you know just 
having having a lot of the um, you know politicians who are on the fence or whatever say, you know what, that's enough. Let's let's go ahead and just you know let's just do the fix all and and just get rid of all guns. You know, one group of people in this United States, uh, Ryan, that I'm really concerned about, because quite frankly, I'm in their numbers, and that's our older seniors and senior citizens in general that live alone. They still are very prosperous with what they want to do with their lifestyle. They're very active, etc. But now the government. The government has made some little sly remarks about how maybe somebody that's drawing Social Security, maybe somebody that's elderly isn't competent enough to have guns and they're looking at that segment to disarm and really become a target well i think that's i think that's the what you're seeing everywhere is is that um just a kind of a kind of a kind of a demeaningness in it you know that okay well you know that gee that's great and uh, you know just well honestly the same same with um our soldiers well you know what um boy uh, you know you know this this soldier the soldier is um you know gee thanks you thank you for serving but you probably have post-traumatic stress disorder and and you know you really shouldn't have a firearm when when you know when you come back to the states and you know and also with a lot of senior citizens as well is just that um so many people um, okay, boy, hey, they, thanks for all that you do, and, you know, here's your AARP <laughs> card, and, and, but we really don't trust you with a firearm. And, um, and at the same time, you know that as well that, yeah, let's, let's call it out like it is, that, you know, that criminals are going to see um, senior citizens as an easier target and have for years. You know, they, they see them at easier targets. But yet, Ryan, why? Why would the government want to sacrifice their personal safety knowing that you can call from a retirement center, you can call from your private home, and you're still many, many minutes away from any assistance with law enforcement? Why take away these people's only chance of self-protection? I'm livid about this, and I think they're targeting a group of people that can't really stand up and be vocal because the government doesn't care about them anymore. I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I think, you know, I, you know, talk, talking about continuing to segregate everyone as well. I mean, you know, I, I speak with, you know, a lot of women at times who, you know, they're, they're like, I, I don't, you know, who are just convinced that I don't need one. I don't need one. And, and, and they're bad. They're evil. They're awful. And, and it's like you, you realize that you're going to, you know, you are viewed as the easier target for a criminal or for, you know, than me or for um, other, other people. So it's, um, and, and same with, you know, same with senior citizens and same with others. And then it's just continuing to pull apart and try to, um, you know, alienate, alienate certain, you know, certain people as well. Uh, it, you know, I, I think no more than... And take a look at you know them trying to get rid of like um, what they refer to as they deem the Saturday night night special. Yeah, yeah. What it is is it's a firearm um, for a person that's on a budget that you know can. But they they said no, that's what's used in crimes, and you know, and, and that may be. But there are a lot of women, you know, single mothers or senior citizens or somebody else who can't afford, you know, can't afford that, and so that's what they have. But it's um, it's. You know, it's really gun control um, as a as whole, just trying to, you know, continue to, um, you, know, el you know, eliminate more people from having firearms. You know, one of the most effective sources of advertising that I have witnessed in a long time, and maybe you don't agree, I want to hear your comments on this, are the NRA ads where they stick one single person in front of the camera and they look at the camera and give a heartfelt response about gun ownership. One of the very best, or two of the very best, I think, that have been made were by Charlie Daniels, great country singer, I know the man personally, and all also, the president of the NRA, Wayne Lapierre. Those ads are effective. Absolutely, and, you know, and, and that's why you know you, you have you know um, these groups all trying to team up on the NRA and trying to get people to disassociate themselves with the NRA. And you know, do I agree with the NRA one hundred percent? 
Not on everything, no. Um, but it, at the same time, it's, you know, um, you know, I'm active part of it. And, you know, and, you know, and, and that's, you know, when people continue to buy into that, that it's, um, I've watched some of these documentaries that are just garbage. And, and you know, it, it's, it's funny because I'm in the industry and, um, and, and, and just this fantasy that, that they try and instill in people's heads that, you know, boy, they're trying, they're, you know, these manufacturers are trying to make these guns, um, you know, as war weapons, so we're killing each other off, and I'm like, that's just absurd. That is, that is just absolutely absurd that, you know, no, nobody wants that stigmatism. Nobody is, you know, trying to make something that, you know, that somebody goes on a mass shooting or anything like that or, you know, or, you know that there's mass casualties or anything like that. You know, it's just another way to, you know, get people to step aside, especially, you know, in the, in the you know, in this more that... Um, assault weapons, which are, you know, are honestly just modern sporting rifles, but, you know, that have, have been around forever, but, you know, they want to make it this latest, greatest technology, but, you know, you take a look at the AR-15, that came out in the 60s, and so, you know, you've got, you've got something, you know, over a half a century old, and, you know, or, you know, you t or, or the, you know, president banning um, imports of, um, of the weapons that we shipped out, like, you know, an M1 Grand. I'm like, <laughs> tell me tell me the last time a, you know, a, a bank or a liquor store was held up with an M1 Grand, and, and um, <laughs> you know, that's just absolutely ridiculous. You know, though, Ryan, when we look at the news daily, there is more and more of a push against private gun ownership, and uh, not all of Hollywood is against gun ownership, but the line Share, but when you hear remarks by Kurt Russell, Tom Selleck, uh, they are refreshing remarks because they're one of the very few voices coming out of Hollywood that have common sense about gun ownership. Yeah, I agree, and you know, and I, I think it's you know, it's it's your you take a look as well, and I've, I've mentioned this before, so a, lot, a lot like police officers as well. You know, um, you know, the older ones have seen everything and. You know, believe more people should um, own a firearm to uh, um, protect themselves. But it's also, you know, in that same sense that you see some of these old, uh, some of these older actors who are like, you know, and I, I bought into that when I was younger or, or whatever, and and um, no, it's not going to fly. And it's um, and no, I, I want something to protect myself. You know, I want something to protect myself. I mean, you, you look at how many of them have stalkers or. or um, or, or whatever else, and, and but it's one of those that it, it comes down to it. Okay, you know, if we give up our Second Amendment, are you going to give up your right to carry as well and protect your life and protect your family? You know, obviously they're going to say, you know, no, absolutely not. One of the motivating factors, and I'll leave this be the last question for this morning, Ryan, but the United Nations seems to have much more power over the thought process of us in the United States and our Constitution. How concerned are you about the U.N. and their power with the uh, gun control issues? You know, it all goes back to them... You know, it's, it's all it's all related in a sense that they want these other countries to, um, um, you know, try to shame us. You know, tr to try and shame us, and and you know, and to an extent, it works. You know, it works with a lot of people going, oh boy, we're, you know, boy, we're the embarrassment because you know they're they're blasting us because everybody's, you know, there's guns everywhere, and um, or, or they work the numbers and. And so it's, um, you know, it's interesting when you do see that and you see, you know, um, you know, either celebrities or politicians jump on board and say, well, you know, boy, we're an embarrassment. Are we really? You know, are, are we really? Because we, you know, it's all, it's, it's all a matter of perspective. You know, I, I think that, you know, I, I think that it's amazing. You know, um, I, you know I, I talk with, I have this one friend, very, 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 very liberal. In any and every sense, she is extremely, extremely liberal. But you know, we were talking, and you know, she's not from she's not from here, and 
and um, very active in political causes, and you know, pretty much on everything we disagree in, we disagree with. However, she agrees on Second Amendment, and, and I kind of thought this was odd, and she said no because she's been stalked. She's been in, in other countries where they have. Um, you know, it's it's um, they're not allowed to own firearms or protect themselves, and so I thought it was just ironic that someone who is very liberal in every and I, I, I thought for sure she's going to be a liberal. You know, she's going to have a position um, against the Second Amendment, but it wasn't it wasn't that case. She was very you know adamant. No, I'm I'm strong favor of the Second Amendment because you know more women are attacked. You know, um, she said, do you understand in some of these countries where um, women are attacked and raped constantly and have no way to protect themselves and um, other people have no way to protect themselves, but the criminals all have firearms? And she said, no, it's, it's, I've seen what can happen and basically says, you know, I, I don't believe the, the line the politicians are saying that, you know, their, their countries are better off. That's not the case. You know, it's interesting, Ryan, in most cases where liberals are against this or against that, when their ox is gored, they change their opinion to be much more conservative. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate your being on the air. Real quick, tell us a little bit about Red Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. You've got all the new firearms. You also are looking for used firearms. Quick, tell us what you need at Red Trading Post. Always looking for used firearms. We're constantly, you know, we have people bringing in, you know, estates, you know, uh, you know uh, who are, you know, either selling large portions of firearms. We sell everything online. Um, what, you know, that is 70% of our business, and that's why we're always looking for used firearms because, um, you know, the fact of the matter is is that what, what it might go for here in southern Idaho, um, it's, it's, it's going to go higher, you know, elsewhere. I mean, we reach, we reach millions, and, um, and, that's, and, and we're actually one of the biggest dealers on gunbroker.com. And so, um, so we're always looking for uh, used firearms. And, and so, you know, if anyone has any that they're looking to sell, looking to trade, or anything like that, we're always looking for used firearms. There's never enough. And that's why if you come in here and I get a lot of people saying, where are you used firearms? They're all, they're all online. We, you know, we list them and they're gone. And so it's, um, they go that fast. All right. We've been talking to Ryan Horsley over at Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls, with the program segment, Our Second Amendment. Ryan, thank you so much for your time here this morning. Right. Thank you, Zeb. God bless. You too, sir. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting. <clears throat> and he does know all about the Second Amendment. Thank you, Red Trading Post and Ryan Horsley. Right now it's time for the weather. I've got to get that in real quick. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Don't forget that tax return meat bundle. If you got money back from Uncle Sam on your taxes, invested in 70-plus pounds of beef, pork, and chicken for only two forty nine plus tax. Oh, my goodness, it is delicious. Your hometown meat cutter, Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's a look at your weather for today. We do have some uh, rain showers in the forecast. Plus, yes, it is going to be windy because we do live in southern Idaho. Out of the last right around 24 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 53. Tonight, low of 34. Tomorrow, looks like partly cloudy skies, but the winds are going to stick around. High of 57 with an overnight low of 33. And then for the weekend, absolutely beautiful. Looks like sunny skies. Highs are going to be in the mid to upper 60s, maybe even 70. Yesterday's high was 60 and the overnight low was 43. That is your weather for Step at the Ranch. Uh, Gina, thank you. Great job on the weather and, of course, brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. 
Uh, once again, we're going to have a recall back uh, next week to Joe Renfro of Western Way Services and talk to them a little bit about what they offer for all of the Southern Idaho community. So be sure and be listening for that. We thank him very much. I uh, want to say thank you to, to Tommy Hutchison, candidate for Cache County Commissioner, District 3. Tommy Hutchison wants your vote on May 17th for Cache County Commissioner. He's a straight shooter and tells it like it is businessman that wants better for Cache residents. Tommy says changes are needed for everyone to enjoy and pursue a better life in Cache County. So vote for a hard worker. Tommy Hutchison for District 3 Cache County Commissioner, paid for by Hutchinson for Commissioner, Don Frazier, Chairman and Treasurer. There you go. All right, we're going to have next week a lot more of our uh, different personalities that are running for public office because that's looming right around the corner on May 17th. Don't forget the primaries, and we'll have a lot more of that right here on Zeb at the Ranch. Uh, real quick, I also want to say thank you to our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Right now, they've got a great big spring tire sale going on. <clears throat> yes, they do. Oh, my goodness, they've got a lot of their tires, a lot of their top, top tires on sale, like the Ultra Z900 for your passenger cars, all season design, up to an 80,000 mile warranty. To Depending on the style of driving that you have, oh my goodness, you better stop in and check it out today. And they've got, of course, the best in brake service with the professionally trained technicians ready to serve you. Stop in and see them today. Free brake estimates and, of course, premium quality parts, the brake industry's best warranty. Make sure that when you say, whoa, stop, you're going to whoa and stop. They've got the best in batteries, front end alignment, shocks and struts, every Everything right there at all seven locations. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Thank you very much. I want to go back to something I said uh, earlier this morning, and I want you to be alerted to next Monday's programming. On Monday, we're going to be talking to Catherine at the Senior Center again, and then, of course, Vicki's Country Garden, and then we're going to have excellent stories with our lawyer friends with the Alliance Defending Freedom. And uh, then we're going to have a 10.30 on Monday, and I'm very fortunate to have this man booked, uh, Dr. Alvin Schmidt, and he is highly regarded as the expert in this particular field. He's an author, a professor, and he's going to be talking about how people have made a very naive and ignorant uh, correlation, saying that Islam's Allah and our Christian God are the same, and he's going to dispute each and every one of the uh, uh, things that people say about the combined efforts, if you will. And Allah and God, our God, definitely not the same. And he's going to talk about that at 1030 on Monday's program. Don't miss it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for all your calls. And, of course, we appreciate your involvement in the program. And uh, we're going to take a little break for a couple of days and then come back on Monday. We'll saddle the horse and ride for three hours, 806 to 11, right here on KBAR 1230, and then streaming live on the Internet all over the world at zebbell.com. And remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. See you next Monday. Have a great weekend. God bless.